You're watching KRQE News 13 on Fox New Mexico. Well, history of hoops, with that being March, you already know the month belongs to college basketball fans rooting for their team or brackets during the NCAA March Madness Tournament. Later in the show, we'll be speaking with celebrity historian Rafi Andonian to learn the origins of the sport and how it's evolved into what we know today. Guess what? Welcome back. March Madness is here, and the game of basketball and the origins of March Madness have changed a little bit and a lot in some cases over the last 100 plus years. Here to tell us more about those changes and more is celebrity historian and our good friend here on the show, Mr. Rafi Andonian. Rafi, it is great to have you with us. Of course, especially when UNM, I'm an alum, one of the schools I have a master's degree from, Same here. makes the tournament, of course, and is going to play yep. Clemson on Friday. There you go. Uh, you mean beat Clemson on That's Friday. That's right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, Rafi, where did this all begin? Well, basketball is really fascinating origin because it started as a winter sport, a desire to have a sport indoors in the 1890s with James Naismith, who, of course, the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame is named after. And Naismith was, believe it or not, his background was in theology. Oh. And he was learning this new thing called physical education as a graduate student. And when he did so, he came up with the game. Now, what's fascinating to me about the first game is that it was what we would call a half-court game. So it was okay. one basket instead of two. And there were 18 people playing, so nine on each side. And that kind of set a precedent to have nine on nine on that situation. Eventually, they experiment with up to 50 players on the court, believe it or not. <laughs> and some of the early rules were a little nuts. Like, for example, you wouldn't be able to dribble the basketball because you had to be you had to be passing or shooting the ball and eventually when they allowed dribbling it was considered a pass to yourself so you had to you had to dribble it one time and you had to go above your head and then you retain possession and you had to pass it again so all these different so traveling rules, encouraged almost that's right. right that's right and so it was kind of a rougher game I would say until dribbling kind of and passing yourself regularly was more you know incorporated and allowed and another thing that's interesting uh, among many rule changes is you could not have coaching during the game that didn't come in until 1949, so 60 years they were playing without coaching during the really? game, believe it or not. That's right. Now, of course, many other rule changes happened since that many people know about, like adding the three-point shot and so on and so forth. But those are the ones that sometimes we forget how different the game used to actually be. There you go. The one and only uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in That's one of right. those uh, previous shots. That's right. Seeing some of the old-school basketball, basketball games, you can see it was a women's sport as well, and it's, one of the, uh, and it's one of the early sports that was accepted as women's basketball took off or was established already in the 1890s. Now, it was a little bit different rules for them for it to be more quote-unquote womanly by not allowing some of the aggressive maneuvers, uh -huh. but the fact that they allowed women to play the sport as well was seen as something very progressive at the time. There you go. March Madness, where did that come in? Ah, March Madness starts in Illinois as a, hi as a high school tournament, believe it or not. Really? And over the course of the 1900s or the 1930s, it grows at some point, you ready for this, to 900 teams participating in a tournament in Illinois as a high school. A Can you believe that? People think 68 teams are talking about adding it to 72 is a lot of teams. Try 900. How's that? And it was single game elimination. It was truly mad. And one of my favorite stories <laughs> from that is when one of the schools that won was it had an enrollment of 90 students and went all the way through the tournament and won the title. So that's how huge it was. Now, eventually there was a book that came out called March Madness uh, about the Illinois high school tournament and eventually a video and documentary that came out as well on that. And that really established a term. It didn't get applied to college basketball, believe it or not, until the 1980s. So the March Madness it started in the 1930s, but it's not till the 1980s it gets applied to college basketball when Brent Musselberg said it. However, that did cause some trademark issues because it was already trademarked oh, really? by the high school folks. Eventually, they got worked out to be allowed to be using it, but it starts there yeah. and continues on into college basketball. And what's funny is uh, I was telling uh, Kenny here on the on the floor crew uh, earlier, uh, even when I first started, you know, when CBS had the exclusive rights yeah. to all the games. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like it, it was it cut into so many of our newscasts because it was just around the clock. It was it was March Madness. I That's mean, right. it was just like game after game after game after day That's after exactly day. Right. Uh, and then, of course, that started getting delegated out to some of the other networks. But yeah. uh, uh, Rafi, this is incredible right here. Uh, let's get to your prediction on Friday's game. <laughs> of course, I have to go for UNM, right? I can't uh, really separate my bias because I wanted to win. I, I, I forgot my red bow tie today to be in the spirit. I should have worn the red bow tie. Close but enough. remember, UNM has had a couple of sweet 16 runs in the past, so we have okay. it in our history. And even the women's game, the women's uh, UNM Lobos have been uh, have made a sweet 16 run as well. And I know New Mexico State is not in it this year, but to, gotta give a 
shout out to our local schools. New Mexico State has had five Sweet 16 runs, including a Final Four, four run. And oh, one last thing to consider yep. oh. is UTEP, which used to be Texas mm -hmm. Western, is one of the most historic college basketball schools. In 1966, they were the first team to start an all-black starting five, beat Kentucky, and help change integration in college sports. There you go. Now that is March Madness. All right, thanks, Rafi. <laughs> we'll be right back.